Hi, let's take a look at this simple Chinese ultrasonic sensor. Its number is HCSR04. Uh, it comes from a wide variety of online retailers and it's a really nice, easy to interface and very cheap sensor. It comes with this uh, removable acrylic mount with uh, two M3 screws uh, fitted so you can attach it to um, uh, a moving arm or another uh, part of a robot or whatever else is your construction. It has an extremely simple interface consisting of four pins, uh, namely VCC, trigger, echo and ground. VCC and ground are pins that used, are used to provide power to the, uh, to the entire circuit on the back. Uh, the sensor can run from 5 volts uh, easily, so there aren't any problems with that. Trigger and echo are two signal pins, but we will uh, get to them in a moment. On the front it has two ultrasonic transducers, T and R, so that's, I suppose, transmit and receive. Uh, on the back it has uh, three integrated circ circuits, unfortunately two of them have no marking on them and the third one is LM324 and that's a double op amp. On the front there is a crystal with no marking at all, so that's, that's not nice uh, and that's all when it comes to the overall construction of this thing and let's have a look at how to get it working and make some measurements. Okay, so uh, that's our very simple circuit uh, to trigger the sensor. The sensor is triggered with a falling edge on its trigger input, so uh, I'm generating a falling edge with a simple push button, a plug resistor and a debouncing cap. And when I press this button, on the oscilloscope we can see a really nice falling edge here from 5 volts to 0 with a very very short falling time of around 200 nanoseconds. So that's that's a very nice falling edge here. Nothing to complain whatsoever. Okay, so let's place something in front of the sensor uh, and trigger it. So that's our lock and we are now triggering the sensor. After triggering the sensor, which is uh, caused by the falling edge on the trigger line, we can see that a positive pulse appeared on the echo line. Let's now change the distance. Uh, so I'm taking the block further away from the sensor. So I'm triggering the sensor. Okay, and let's take a look at the oscilloscope. On the oscilloscope we can uh, once again see uh, a very similar situation a falling catch on the trigger line and a positive pulse on the echo line but this time the pulse has a different length and that means that the length of the pulse depends on the distance measured by the sensor. Let's try and work out the formula for uh, calculating the distance basing on the pulse wave. So we need to make some more measurements. Uh, first I'm gonna place the block at 5 centimeters from the sensor so the distance is 5 centimeters and let's measure the positive pulse time and the time is around 300 microseconds now the block is placed at 10 centimeters from the sensor let's trigger the sensor and we can see that the time is around 650 microseconds a couple more measurements. Turns out that the pulse wave increases by 300 microseconds for each 5 centimeters of the distance. In order to use the sensor you would need to um, connect it to a microcontroller of some kind. It can be an AVR, it can be an Arduino, it can be a PIC. And connect the trigger input of the sensor to an output of the microcontroller and the echo output of the sensor to an input of a microcontroller then the program on the microcontroller would need to first generate a falling edge on its output. If it's a digital output then uh, just uh, write a zero to it, so a falling edge is gen then generated. Then after the falling edge and before the rising edge here, it would need to wait for this rising edge on the input 
then fire up a timer or another method of measuring the time then it would need for a falling edge to appear here and then stop the timer and read the measured time value. Then the microcontroller would need to calculate the uh, length in centimeters uh, and by analyzing the measurement data we've done before uh, you can work out that the formula is uh, length in centimeters equals the measured time in microseconds over 60 and that is gonna uh, give you the answer. One last thing, we are going to measure the frequency the sensor operates with so in order so, in order to do that, uh, we need to um, probe the uh, transmission transducer. Uh, probe it that is positive. Uh, probe it that is positive pin, and take a quick look at the oscilloscope. So let's trigger the sensor, and we have a nice and clear waveform on the oscilloscope. And there are a couple of things we can see when we add the third waveform, uh, the transducer input. So, um, the first thing is that the sensor has a tiny delay after the trigger, so it's getting triggered here by the falling edge, and there is roughly 300 microseconds of a delay. The second thing we can see is that it pulls up the echo line just after it finishes the transmission, and the third way thing we can see is that the sensor operates with a frequency of 40 kHz, and that's twice the upper barrier of the human hearing. So. Uh, nobody is going to hear this sensor because nobody can hear at 40 kHz, obviously.